Hello, everybody. Today we are going to talk about scanning. We're going to look at how to mark up a line of poetry to figure out the beat, essentially. So poetry is uh, basically like songs in the ancient world. In fact, the word that uh, in the golden age, at least, the Romans preferred to call their poems, not poemi, but carmina. And if you look up Carmen, the first definition is song. These things were meant to be read aloud, but not even read aloud, but sung aloud, just like songs you can see the lyrics on the paper but there's a beat to it and every kind of poem has a certain kind of beat the poem uh, uh epic poems so homer's iliad and odyssey ovid's metamorphoses the virgil's aeneid this is in an, a meter called a beat so we call it a meter called uh, dactylic hexameter. You see that on your screen right there. And that's a, a, Greek, a Greek term, but all that means is that hexameter refers to six feet. And so we're going to call these things feet, but you would probably be familiar if you studied music as in like measures, like, you know, every, every line of dactylic hexameter has six measures. And each measure, and I'm going to start calling them feet now, each foot is made up of two really just groups of sounds. One, one option is bump a bump. Okay, so it's like a long and then a short short, long short short, bump a bump. And the term for that is a dactyl. The other thing that you can do in a foot is a spondy. So it's bum bum. So a line of dactylic hexameter is made up of six feet and each foot can consist of either a dactyl, bum, 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 long, short, short, or a spondy, bum, bum, long, long. And if you look at this line from Orpheus and Eurydice, this is line six, you can see I've marked the six feet by the divisions here, and you can see it's bum, 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 bum. Okay, now that sounds very horribly not musical, <laughs> um, but we, uh, we have a long syllable and then a short short. So we have a dactyl, then we have another dactyl, another dactyl, a spondy, a dactyl, and then a spondy. And most of the time, like 99% of the time, a line of dactylic hexameter will end bum, ba, bum, 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 stridula, fumo. Okay? Um, about 80% of the time, 80 to 90% of the time, a line of dactylic hexameter will start out with a dactyl, fox quoque. And then it's really these sort of these sort of middle feet that we have to kind of figure out. Okay. Now I want to be very clear about something. The meter is not something we have sort of artificially placed onto the the meaning of it or the latin that the the writer has chosen the writer has chosen these words in the in this order because they have a certain beat to it okay just like in english when we are creating music and we're writing lyrics we're writing lyrics in a way that produce a certain rhythm produce a certain beat maybe they rhyme maybe they don't maybe they punctuate at certain syllables but here Ovid has chosen this line six because it fits this dactylic hexameter beat. Fox quoque quam tenu it lacrimo so stridula fumo. Okay? So it's bum, 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 bum. All right. So how how do we do this? All right. Well, here's the deal. Our job as Latin students who are scanning poetry is to look at a line and mark which syllables are long and which syllables are short. Okay. Now there are some really hard and fast rules about what syllables are long. Okay. The very basic rule is that if you have a vowel, so V for vowel, and that vowel comes in front of two consonants, and they don't have to be the same consonants, I don't care what consonants they are, that vowel, really that syllable, is long. So that's rule number one, okay? Now, if that vowel happens to come in front of just one consonant, or no consonants at all, well, guess what? That vowel is short, okay? So notice, 
um, let's go to this I here. Now notice this I comes in front of just an M, not two consonants, but just an M, so it's short. Notice that this, uh, let's see here, um, okay, this a comes in front of an M and a T. It comes in front of two consonants. So that's why that A is long. So here's our vowel syllable. And it comes in front of one, two, which is why I marked it long. Okay, now the next rule, and it's probably the easiest one because the work is done for you. So that's rule number one. The vowel is long if it comes in front of two consonants. The second rule is if the vowel itself, or the syllable really, uh, is made up of a vowel that has a macron over it. So you can see streedla. So that I has a macron. That syllable's long. That's, that's a piece of cake, right? The work is done for you. Here's your macron. That tells you the vowel is long, so the syllable is long. Okay? That really is the basic premise of dactylic hexameter. You mark a vowel long when it's followed by two consonants, or the vowel is already marked long by a um, by a macron there. Okay, so if we're looking at, for instance, the second line, I know that this e is long because that macron is there. I know that this o is long because that macron is there. This a, this u, this o. Okay. Now, let's take a look here. I also know that this E is long because it's followed by the R in the Q. Now, really, I'm going to tell you in a second here that this QU, these two letters together, that's really one letter. It's called, a, there's a special name for it. It's called a labiovelar, but QU is really just one letter. And I can prove it to you because if you say that word, perque, how many syllables is it? Perque. Right, two syllables, pair, the E, and then the uh or the E, right? Pair que. So we're not saying pair kue, right? This U is not a syllable or a vowel in and of itself. That Q U is actually one, just one letter. We're gonna treat it like one letter. Okay, let's get back to the task at hand. So we know that this E is long because it's followed by two letters. Okay. Um, let's see here. I know that this U is long because it is followed by, it's actually followed by three consonants, not just two, but three consonants, L, C, and R. So I know that that's long as well. Now, if I'm right, all of the other syllables should be short. So let's take a look. So remember, I'm not marking this U. And in fact, what you might want to do is you might want to just scratch out the U for the time being, just so you know. Like every time you see a Q, you're going to see a U. And just to kind of remind you, I would just scratch out the U, okay? Um, and, and let me remind you too that in Latin, you never see a Q without a U, right? It's always Q. You think about it. You never see it ever, 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 ever. If ever we ever run into a Q that, has, that, that doesn't have a, a, a U following it, it is some sort of um, foreign loan word that has come into Latin and been transliterated, but uh, I don't think we'll ever see it. Okay, so I'm marking this syllable as short because it doesn't, it only comes uh, before one consonant. Same thing with the U. All right, so then we're going to mark the line here, and notice we have a dactyl. And remember, I told you each line of dactylic hexameter, most of the time, about 80, 90% of the time, is begun by a dactyl, bum, 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 per quella, ace, and then look, popple. And again, I'm right there. That O is short because it's only followed by a P. The U is short. It's only followed by an L. All right, now we got our O, and it's long. Look, this I is only followed by just one M. This U only followed by the L. Now look at your A. And again, only followed, here this A, only followed by the one letter, right, que, that Q-U is one letter. And then here's your E, all right? And then this A is short, this E is short, followed just by the one letter, and then we have it. So if we've done it right, we should have six feet, okay? Six measures, one, two, three, five, six. We've done it right. 
Pericoile, Weis populos, Simulac, Croque, Funta sepulcro. There we go. So we have the, the B to it. Okay, now I want you to pause and I want you to scan this line and remember the QU thing. But I don't see any QUs here. No, I do see a U. And if we're not sure if that's a syllable, if we just say this word out loud, and if it's two syllables, we, we make sure that we mark two syllables. If it's three syllables, we make sure we mark three syllables. And in fact, wolui, wolui, that's three. So I should have three marks, whether they're long or short, as we'll find out. But pause it, give this a shot, and let's see what you came up with. Okay? All right, hopefully you did your work there and you've unpaused. And we have marked all of the macrons here. All right. And now we're going to mark all the syllables that come before two consonants. So there's the Paul in front of SS. Uh, let's see here. There's a C and an M. So there is a macron. There's an E in front of M, P, and T. That's definitely long. And that looks like it's about it. So if we've done our job right, the rest of the vowels should be short. So E comes before just the P. A comes before just the T. O in front of the L. U, remember Wolu, right? So that U is, is a syllable, wolu -e. So uh, look, that one's done, that one's done, and then the E comes before the N, the E here comes before the G. And so here we go. Po sepa ti wolu e nek me tem ta se bo. So there's that rhythm. All right. So those are the basics of dactylic hexameter. Uh, remember that the exception to the rule has to do with that qu. Okay. So we had per que, but that's only two syllables. So we just mark one, two, and I'm just going to scratch out those u's. Uh, so that I'm not worried about that, okay? The other rule that's uh, kind of a big exception, and I want to go back up to this very first line here, and I want to talk about a couple things. Now, the biggest one is right here, lacrimoso. Now, remember, my rule is that if a vowel, here the A syllable, comes before two consonants, it's long, but look, I've marked this short, and this is for a very common exception. And the rule, and this is called the liquid L, liquid L or R rule, okay? And what's happening here is L's and R's really technically are not really full consonants. There's a term for these. They're actually called glides. So they're not consonants in the way that B and D and K and G, like B, D, K, G, right? They're L. <laughs> they're R. They're called glides, okay? And in when we're talking about the quantity of the syllable in front of a consonant cluster, two consonants, uh, or more, that involve an L or an R, we actually have our choice. That vowel could be long or short depending on what we need. So we have some flexibility there. So this C or R, or this C and R, uh, is a constant cluster, but one of them is an R. One of them could be an L. It could be RL, could be LR, could be two R's, two L's, doesn't matter if it involves any L or R. We actually have a choice. Now here, we need it to be short. We need that syllable to be short because when we scan it, we get the IT, the long syllable here. We get the short syllable there, and it's got to be short. So that liquid L or R rule means that um, the syllable before it could be long or short, and it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, let me let's take a look here, and here's a really kind of a simple one. This this line 15, we have the E here. Now. R, S. So that's a consonant cluster, but one of them is an L or an R. So this E could be long or it could be short. Now here, it's just the beginning of the line, so it's definitely long. Okay? 
So that's what's going on in that first line. We have A because it comes in front of one, two consonants. O because it just comes in front of uh, the short O because it comes in front of one consonant. E, again, one consonant. The long A because it comes in front of M and T. And then N, U. So E followed just by an N. U followed by actually a vowel. Now we have a T. And that's long because it comes in front of two consonants. Now again, one of them is an L, but we need it to be long here. And then here's the A that we talked about. Here's the I. Here's macron, macron, that's easy. Macron, and then short, short, and then long, long. Okay? So those are the basics of scanning. I want you to practice that. I want you to take a look at this. And we will talk about a couple of exceptions in a, in a later tutorial. Okay? Great job, everybody. Bye-bye.